Hey, welcome back. Dr. Matt here. So today we're talking about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO. <clears throat> you know, and this is becoming a, a more and more common diagnosis. More and more people are talking about it, see it all over, over the internet, Facebook groups. And basically SIBO, that diagnosis means that bacterial flora that are not meant to be in the small intestine are now present in the small intestine. Not necessarily that these are pathogenic, but for the small intestine, they are pathogenic. So the small intestine is not a sterile environment, nothing sterile in the body, but compared to the large intestine, it is a very small amount of bacteria. So the small intestine has in the range of like a thousand to 10,000 bacteria per, per milliliter of fluid. That is compared to the large intestine, which has like a hundred trillion bacteria per milliliter. Big difference, right? Big, big difference. So you can see that there's just huge chasm between what's in the large intestine and what's in the small intestine. <clears throat> now, the natural motility or movement of these little finger-like projections called microvilli in our small intestine, they keep the right bacteria there and the wrong bacteria out of the small intestine. Uh, along with the, the acidic environment or the acidic pH of the stomach, which of course will um, uh, combine to incinerate nasty bacteria or pathogens that are coming through. But it really is those microvilli and then the acidity of the stomach and, and some bile acids um, from the liver that keep the bacteria that are supposed to be in the small intestine there and the ones that are not supposed to be there out of there. Sometimes, of course, this doesn't work out. And <laughs> the desired bacteria um, are not present or undesired bacteria become present in the small intestine. And essentially, this can cause a bacterial infection of the small intestine. And if this is not dealt with, uh, we get small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, uh, which of course is super undesirable. And if you've ever experienced this or you're experiencing it now because you're watching this video, you can see, you can know how finicky and, and how just uh, terrible it can be. And if uh, you, have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you know, you'll end up with malabsorption issues, maldigestion issues, your, your bowel patterns will change, you might end up with, with headaches and fatigue, you know, all, all manner of weight loss, uh, weight gain, you name it. Uh, if indeed bacteria are proliferating, rogue ones are proliferating in your small intestine. So what are the common underlying causes, you know, at the root of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Uh, first one would be antibiotic use. Uh, another one would be uh, birth control pills, which we'll talk about that a little more. You know, thyroid conditions, diabetes, you know, excess glucose floating around, antidepressant medications, anxiety medications, uh, chronic um, poorly metabolized stress. You know, just continually being inundated by, by stressors. Constant grazing actually is a big one. So you know, just, you're eating meals all the time, eating food all the time, snacking all the time, not sitting down at meals, eating a lot of processed food. Uh, taking antacids or uh, you know like meprazole or things that are block uh, the acid production of your stomach, you know any, you know any medication we think of for stomach ulcers or uh, GERD acid reflux, all these different things can affect the bacterial balance and affect gastrointestinal motility that that act the the microvilli act of pushing bacteria out of the small intestine that should not be there and back in the large intestine. So there's a lot to think about when it comes to small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and potentially what in our life or your life might be propagating, helping it, causing excess proliferation of these bacteria. So bloating, gas, uh, you know, consistent digestive discomfort, diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, nutrient malabsorption, see like chronic iron deficiency, anemia, B12 deficiencies, folate deficiencies, zinc deficiencies, uh, just a feeling of like a chronic infection. All these can be signs or symptoms of that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or, or SIBO. Um, and essentially, if you have that kind of stuff, you might want to get a breath test and, and look for hydrogen gas um, and the levels of hydrogen gas uh, in your breath that are being produced because your, your bacteria basically will produce if they're in, in the wrong state and there's too many in the small intestine, they'll produce an excess amount of hydrogen uh, when subjected to any kind of like sugar. So that bacterial overgrowth, 
makes all this hydrogen. We do a breath test, um, normally like three different ones same day, and you'll see, whoa, look at look at the changes in my hydrogen and gas, you know, after after my initial uh, you know glucose uh, input or, or sugar input. So that's that's pretty much the, the best way. Um, you know, to be more objective in our diagnostics for checking for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. I will say, you know, uh, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, is often a promoter of SIBO, and vice vice versa. More more SIBO activity, more more IBS symptoms happen, and so they can kind of play off each other. And you, so you got to be like, you know, is it small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Is it IBS, irritable bowel syndrome? Is it both of them? You know, some some people they hear the uh, the uh, idea of an infection too, and they you know, when you say small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you know, oh my god, a small intestine has an infection. Uh, is it, you know, are people going to pass it along? I'm in the subway. I'm, you know, I, uh, I'm married. My my husband, wife has a SIBO. Is it contagious? I just want you to let you know, it's not contagious. You'll be fine. Uh, you're not going to pass it along to anybody. Nobody's going to pass it along to you. <laughs> um, but that is, that is a question that often comes up. So I mentioned before about birth control and or oral, oral contraceptive use and I just wanted to, to run back on that because this is this is a big deal it is it is a causative agent or it can be a causative agent for the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and if you think about the use of, of oral contraceptives you know it's like going up 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 and you know SIBO is going up 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 in uh, in, in occurrences so Potentially, this is a huge player in why there's so much small intestinal bacterial overgrowth going on. And, you know, there's a couple mechanisms whereby OCPs, oral contraceptives, estrogenic compounds um, might be problematic or, or might be, you know, potentiating a SIBO. And one is that excess of estrogens inhibit the, the excretion of bile salts from the liver uh, into that small intestine. So if you're, ex you're inhibiting bile salt secretion, uh, then you're, you don't have this antimicrobial bile salt agent in the small intestine. So when you, when you lack that or you're deficient in that, then um, the potential for bacterial overgrowth to happen there is higher because the bile salts are actually a mechanism where which the body, the, the digestive tract, keeps uh, bacteria at bay. And then the second one is that uh, estrogen delays or excess of estrogen delays stomach emptying, gastric emptying, uh, and essentially slows down the digestive process, uh, which can affect, well, like we talked about before, gastrointestinal motility, uh, which is the very thing we're trying to kick into full gear, right, when we're treating small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So both the bile salt part and the, the slowing motility down can contribute to SIBO. Um, via oral contraceptive use. So I think, you know, if, if you're on oral, con oral contraceptives, you're having digestive issues, or you're considering oral contraceptives, man, you might want to, you know, find, find out some other answers, look at, look at some other ways of going about um, either birth control or if you're using it for acne or, or what have you. Um, you know, is there something else that you can do? And there is, <laughs> there's plenty of other things we can do. So talk to your doctor, get a functional medicine doctor on board, get a naturopathic doctor on board to get you answers. Uh, so the activities in the intestinal tract, you know, they're vast, super complex, so much going on, both physiologically, psychologically in our digestive tract. You know, there's an entire nervous system called the enteric nervous system that uh, basically is in control, autonomic control of our digestive tract. And, you know, there's no simple solution to small intestinal bacterial growth because of this automaticity. Um, and it's like, there's no turnoff, right? So that's why, you know, people do antibiotic therapies to um, help a SIBO, but that only works like half the time. And personally, in my experience, I have yet to see a single patient who took an antibiotic uh, one time, two times, three times, four times, 10 times for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, who via the antibiotic ended up with long-term remission of SIBO. You know, maybe last for a month, three months, six months, and then it's back full force. You know, and a lot of times worse than it was before. So there's some things you want to look at when we're trying to heal from SIBO. This is what you want to hear, right? The healing part. If you look at the whole body, you got to think about lifestyle. You got to be thinking eating habits, stress habits, sleeping habits. How am I, how am I responding to stress? How, how am I uh, communicating my stress? Am I, uh, am I able to let go? Am I able to let down? Am I, am I taking time to rest, 
to, to recover from life? Uh, am I getting regular physical activity? Am I, you know, am I sweating? All these things can affect the migrating motor complex and, and that motility response of our small intestine. And they can help us clear rogue flora from the small intestine. So if we're eating lots of processed food, that's going to be a problem. If we're taking you know, birth control, that's going to be a problem. If we're uh, you know, having a lot of anxieties and depression issues, that's going to be a problem. And that's going to keep us from healing at the rate we want to heal at. And make it, maybe get us in a state of like, we just won't heal. I can't heal. It's not working. Nothing's working. And that is because you know we got small intestinal bacterial growth in the middle. We got all these little cogs to that healing wheel. And you got to put them all to play. It's not going to just be one thing. It's not going to be one little supplement here, one supplement there, one little program here. It's going to be a whole lifestyle endeavor to get this right. And that's how it is when we talk about the autonomic nervous system, vagal tone, you know, the um, diaphragmatic breathing. You know, all these things play into healing small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So we got to be thinking about, okay, before meals, maybe taking bitters, um, you know, maybe taking some hydrochloric acid, maybe taking digestive enzymes with meals, maybe looking at you know motility potentiators like low dose naltrexone or, or ginger or artichoke, ac artichoke extract, uh, or um, you know maybe using some herbal antimicrobials. There's you know rifaximin is a common antibiotic used for SIBO, but there are antimicrobial formulas that that are that show to be as beneficial, if not more, more beneficial than it. Um, also considering you know, things like uh, purified colostrums, things that help with leaky gut syndrome, and uh, look at your hormone metabolism. You know, are, is your estrogen, your estrone to estradiol ratio is way off? Maybe we need to look at that and figure out, okay, let's help the liver out to, to move these estrogens through more efficiently. Uh, or you know, looking at thyroid function. Definitely want to look at thyroid function if you have SIBO. And then you know, we talk about processed food inputs. You just got to eliminate them. There's no way around it. If you don't eliminate the processed food, the vegetable oils, you know, the added sugars and flours coming in, it's not. You're not going to get rid of SIBO. So you know, you may even have to go on a very strict food routine that that is potentially really low in a lot of vegetable matter, a lot of um, fibrous content that may be higher in meat content, uh, or potentially could be the complete opposite. It all depends on the person. So you really are going to want to though stop snacking because you need about three to four hours between each meal, each snack, each food input to allow this motor complex to do its duty, to do what it does, to clear the bacteria from the small intestine. I mean, if that is, that is a huge overlooked facet of this whole healing process is giving the body this time, or the small, this large intestine, small intestine, and stomach, this time of rest. You know this, these increments be between meals. So if you're um, if you're not able to do that, it's gonna be hard to heal. And part of that is gonna be like, okay, let's get your blood sugar under control. And the more real food you can put in your body, you know, maybe even practicing something like intermittent fasting. Uh, so you're before bed, especially you're you're keeping your your food inputs lower or or none. If you're snacking all the time right now, maybe like, okay, well, how can I cut out just two of those snacks during the day? and slowly move yourself, like it lets accumulate health, right? Slowly move yourself to the space where you could literally eat, you know, maybe breakfast, lunch, and dinner, because that would be paramount to overcoming small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So, you know, for many, this can be a life altering experience. And to, I would say to, to heal from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, it's also going to be a life altering experience. Because like I said, it's a nervous system thing. It's a psychological thing. You know, it's a a, uh, a physical thing. Both are happening in tandem when we talk about SIBO. And uh, if we can go after those, you know, low hanging fruit, grab a couple little itsy bitsy things. Say maybe it's the meal timing. Maybe it's taking bitters before meals. Maybe it's hydrochloric acid enzymes. Uh, you know, changing up of the types of food you're eating at certain times during the day. Working on your your sleep response. Working on your stress your stress response. Getting those things under control, you know, finding just one of them. Start with one and build from there. Maybe you can't do all 400 of them one time, or you can't do all, you know, eight or 10 cogs in the wheel that you need to do to completely heal. But if you start with just one of them this month, then the next month you add another one, next month add another one. There's no just like, I'm done with SIBO, right? So we'd be better off adding in one thing at a time, subtracting one thing at a time, and getting to where, you know, six months, eight months, nine months, a year from now. Like, whoa, this is amazing. I have margin related to my digestive system. The gas, the bloating is like 50% less or, or gone versus, you know, just doing a bunch bunch of crazy stuff, blowing ourselves up, doing everything possible, 
um, you know, for a month and then not doing anything and throwing in the towel and experiencing the disdain, the, the undesirableness that is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. All right, I hope this is super helpful. Um, I mean, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is a huge topic. We could talk for like 10 hours right now about it and all the nuances for, for, for people. But I think, you know, these foundational things, if you go back about a minute or two minutes on this video, getting those foundational things lined up, talking to your doctor about them can be so, so helpful. Um, whatever the other therapies that you're uh, interjecting uh, into your SIBO therapy. All right, I'm Dr. Matt. Please like, subscribe if this is, this is helpful, supportive, good information that you find um, beneficial to you. And get this out to your friends, to your family members who might be struggling with digestive issues, with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, uh, with symptoms that are unrelated or they don't know what's going on. But uh, when you start going through the litany of things maybe that they're putting into their life um, or stressors they've been under or symptoms they're having, you say, whoa, maybe that is SIBO you're experiencing. Um, all right. Talk to you guys later.